Donald Trump Jr. interviewed Marjorie Taylor Greene on his show, Triggered, and it went about as badly as you'd expect. Well, I hate to subject you to this, but I came across an interview with Donald Trump Jr., interviewing marjorie taylor green and you just know that's not going to end well so we have to take a look at it i've seen for the purposes of the show a number of don jr's interviews and we've covered some of them on the show always very strange he's definitely a bizarre interviewer and let me tell you this one probably even worse than you'd expect with that being said let's dive into the first clip the first part is marjorie green saying she's fed up with Republicans. And we've seen a lot of this MAGA rage lately at other Republicans. Chip Roy, for example, saying his party hasn't done anything for his constituents. And Marjorie Greene is saying the same thing, which I agree, Republicans are failing. But a lot of that is because of people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. And case in point, in the second part of the clip, you'll hear her say that she thinks Republicans should be more focused on the real issue at hand. The Biden administration is a communist regime. I don't think Marjorie knows what communism is. Take a look. Well, you know, many Americans that I talk to every single day, Don, and I'm sure it's the same for you. People are hopeless. People are angry. People are disgusted with Republicans, especially in Congress, because no one is doing anything to stop the Biden regime. No one is holding anyone accountable. And I very much feel exactly the same way. Um, as a matter of fact, I feel like I did back when I decided to run for Congress. And I ran for Congress because I was fed up with Republicans. Um, yeah. and, and that's the situation we're in. The Biden administration is a communist regime. And I can't say that loud enough. And we have communists embedded in our federal agencies and departments. And that started under the Obama administration when Joe Biden was vice president. You know what's deeply and profoundly sad to think about? There's an audience of people that watches this interview and goes, wow. These are some serious people, some thoughtful, wise people. Yeah, we need to stop the communist Biden regime. Yikes. And on that, before playing the next clip, please name a policy, somebody, anybody that you believe to be communist that Biden has implemented. Is it Biden lowering seniors prescription drug costs, something his predecessors promised but failed to do? Is it the historic investment in infrastructure, something Trump said he was going to do a bunch of times and didn't do? Now, of course, I don't think they're really keeping up with the policy record of Biden policy. What are we talking about? Um, probably they're thinking about Biden locking up Trump or something, which, of course, isn't happening. But all very strange. Then it's not a MAGA interview without the conspiracy theories about January 6th, which have all of a sudden once again become a big focus within MAGA. Someone was punching and beating up cops on January 6th. I thought there was very little of that. I didn't see almost any of it. I wonder how many of it was FBI people, you know, from the buses of people that they don't talk about that we're now reading about came in there. The FBI will not release the videos because it would, and I quote, expose too many of their undercover agents. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. So of course we knew because just like every other conspiracy theory that comes true every damn time, we knew it was happening. We knew it was the Fed surrection. You knew it was going on, but you didn't, you didn't have the proof. And they were going to make sure, just like the other videos of people not being violent, they were going to cover up the exculpatory evidence like the videos. You know, I sort of have a hard time even understanding what it is that he's trying to communicate. It's one of the problems I notice with conspiracy theories. They get so deep into the conspiracy bubble that they're in that they forget other people aren't and have no idea what they're talking about. The Fed surrection, that was the term he used. Fed surrection. Fed surrection. <laughs> Just gonna say it one more time. So strange. Now, I guess by the videos he's referring to, he means the security footage from January 6th, but every time more footage gets released, including by Mike Johnson, it doesn't prove what they are asserting that it does. We covered this in a recent video, but you had people within MAGA freaking out over this shot next to me from a security camera of a rioter. And they were saying he was flashing a badge. That was what was in his hand. And it was proof that it was all false flag operation and an attempt to frame Trump and his supporters. But then in reality, he was holding a vape. And here's another shot where the guy is holding the same vape that day. And he went to prison. He's not a Fed. 
<laughs> he's actually a Trump supporter, shockingly. And I again have to say, why do they push these conspiracy theories? Well, as we've talked about, it's because they understand that that day represents such an awful part of their party. They understand that it's a really bad look, to say the least, to have the guy leading your party as the sitting president of the United States trying to prevent the peaceful transfer of power, whether it be through the fake elector scheme, the VP blocking of the certification plan, or inciting a mob to attack the Capitol. They know how bad that looks. So they want, at least on that last part, to have it blamed on someone else. If it was the FBI that was orchestrating all this to make Trump supporters look bad, maybe you shouldn't blame Trump so much. But it wasn't the FBI. Obviously, it was Trump. And his supporters indeed have to be held accountable for the actions on that day. It's crazy we have to <laughs> discuss this. There's even a debate going on. On that note, before I play another clip from Marjorie and Don Jr.'s interview, the lies trickle down right on down to their followers. Here was a moment from an interview I did with Trump supporters in Waco, Texas a while back where one of them or both of them were fully bought into this idea. They had brought it up and Pence had a chance to... On January 6th? He, yeah. He had his chance to say what he needed to say and then all of a sudden the riot happened. And they, Ooh, I see where we're going. Yeah, yeah that, the ride happened and everybody had to flee. And then by the time they come back in there, <laughs> then they couldn't do it. Okay, okay. So, we're not wait, we're not we gotta, we gotta break this all down. It's okay, okay, it's okay. So first we gotta start with what do you think actually happened on January 6th? Who actually initiated it? I think uh, I think it was infiltrated by the FBI and people in Black uh, Black uh, uh, Live. Black Live Matter, yeah. 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 Now you know that was all a ploy. To do what though? Uh, why would why would why would the, the American supporters all of a sudden start uh, uh, creating havoc mm -hmm. when they haven't done it before? Why would they do that? Right wing extremism is actually far more common common than left wing extremism. <laughs> yeah, but they right. did. But oh, I gotta go back to it though. The certification was going to certify Biden's win. The votes were there. It was. And Pence was going to do it. He was on board with certifying Biden win well, they had before the January 6th. So why would they want a, a riot that would prevent them from certifying it for the night? Okay, but let's think about it, though. Pence was not on board. It's just when the person said, Pence said, do you have the the names? They said, we have the name. Has it been approved by the Senate? Yep. Or the, and and, and the just the as they, as he asked them that, bam. That's when the everybody ride to rushed God, out. Everybody had to so rush out. After they got but then through. they came back and did what they were going to do anyways. Yeah, but they couldn't do it after they come back. It's wild. I honestly could cause my own brain to just shut down trying to connect the dots on these conspiracy theories. Not even trying to understand how the ideas can be believed in when there's not evidence that back them up. But instead, even pretending like there could be evidence. How would this all connect? All these different... FBI is trying to frame Trump for some reason and block the certification of the guy that they're for, which is Biden. And also it's Antifa and BLM, but they're dressed as Trump supporters, but then Trump supporters get arrested and they are the ones who are now political prisoners. And why Pelosi and the FBI would <laughs> do all that to make Trump? What would be the grand ending to that story? This great conspiracy among all these different institutions and individuals, just so some Trump supporters could be put in jail or so Trump could look bad. He's doing plenty fine on his own looking bad without Pelosi coordinating such a thing. And then, by the way, somehow all of that coincides, just happens to have lined up with Trump saying a bunch of things that would have led any logical person to assume he was encouraging his followers to do the things they did at the Capitol and caused the big debacle. But Pelosi knew he was going to say those things. So some would be there. <laughs> then still on the subject of January 6th, later in this interview, you had this. No matter how much we talk about it, no matter how much we know, so few people, even on our side, have really been able to talk about the first hate experience, what it was like being in that building that day. Well, that uh, that chapter is such a good chapter. Uh, that was my third day on the job as a member of Congress. I couldn't even find my way from the House chamber back to my office. I couldn't even find my way to a bathroom, uh, let alone uh, be able to give anyone a tour. And I was accused of giving insurrection tours in the Capitol, which is so <laughs> ridiculous. 
Um, but in, in, we were in the house chamber and we had worked diligently for weeks and weeks getting ready to object to the Joe Biden's electoral college votes. And I took it very seriously because it was a constitutional right and duty I had as a member of Congress. I was shocked and I was also scared because no one could tell me that those were Trump supporters. I fully believe that they were Antifa BLM rioters. What is wrong with some people, truly? She says, so I thought it was Antifa. Get this, I thought it was Antifa and BLM. So I was terrified. It was such a frightening day. I needed somebody who was armed with me, all right? But then I found out it was MAGA. So now I don't care, it's not a big deal. And now I tell people it was actually the FBI or I still act like it was Antifa. And she says that a lot. You just couldn't convince me it wasn't Antifa. Also, the January 6th political prisoners need to be released. You know, there was someone who left a comment on episode one of Mocha's with MAGA that said, talking to Trump supporters is like trying to light a match underwater. And that applies to this. Trying to understand Marjorie Taylor Greene and Don Jr.'s logic is indeed like trying to light a match underwater, except it's not even a match. It's just a stick <laughs> that you're trying to light. It's just not going to work. Also, can we just take a second to acknowledge this for our podcast listeners? I'm putting up on screen a strange moment during what we just watched from the standpoint of Don Jr.'s facial expression. Hmm. And then in the final moment, Marjorie celebrates just how much a lot of America hates her. Oh, well, this was a fun way. So most people have endorsements. Uh, on their book cover, you know, Rush Limbaugh says it's a great, you know, whatever it may be, right? I, I know I have it in, in my books. Uh, you did something uh, a little different uh, in your endorsements. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I thought, you know, what are the what are the things that people need to read on the back of this book that that they want make them wonder what is in the pages? Uh, so we put some of the folks on the back. I've got a quote from Joe Biden that says, isn't she amazing? Uh, I've got Hillary Clinton. This woman should be on a watch list, not in Congress. Uh, I've got a great, great quote from Nancy Pelosi. MTG is the cause for trauma and fear among members of Congress. Um, Liz Cheney, Whoopi Goldberg, and AOC. So I thought, you know what? Let's put them on the back of the book. I don't I don't need anybody else to say anything more about me. Um, I, I think that I'd say that's they definitely want to read. That's the most glowing endorsements uh, you could possibly get if you're on our side. It's like, you know, it's, it's not just praise from people who think alike. It's the, it's the abject hate and fear from uh, the, the lunatics that are destroying our country. It's honestly so weird. It reminds me of that ad that DeSantis account put out that just played clips of people saying he was a threat to democracy and would do all these horrible things. And DeSantis was like, yeah, that's me. <laughs> I don't think Democrats would ever do that. People like Biden are constantly trying to of course, say certain ideologies are dangerous, but I'm a president for all Americans. He said that many times. It's just sort of strange to promote and say, hey, isn't it great that like 60% of the country is terrified by me? Before you go, don't forget to become a member at lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership to get the daily bonus show Monday through Friday, an entire bonus show Monday through Friday. Plus follow me on threads at Luke Beasley official Instagram, at Luke Beasley Official and X at Luke P. Beasley Plus. Sign up for the Beasley Brief, a daily morning newsletter that summarizes the previous day's events by going to LukeBeasleyShow.com slash brief. And I'll talk to you all next time.